He said, Preacher, have you not heard about Sodom and Gomorrah? I said, Yes, I have. He said, You know, the Bible says it rained fire and brimstone upon those wicked cities. And not only Sodom and Gomorrah, but as you read the Bible, it says in the sister cities, all the other cities that was part of was just like they were. So when God sent fire and brimstone down, he didn't only just bury Sodom and Gomorrah, which is under the Dead Sea, in case you don't know it, but all the rest that put their hands to it. I said, stop this bus. And I went out and picked up some of these stones. Now, I've always been a strong man, and I wanted to bring one back, but I just bigger around. I could not pick it up. But the biggest one I could pick up was a little bigger than a cantaloupe, and it took all I could to carry it. Mm -hmm. How would you like to be hit with that? Hmm. That's the judgment of God. God hates homosexuality. And you people out there and you idiots that's trying to say to me, shut my mouth. If you can shut God's mouth, you can shut mine. Because my Bible says it's better to obey God rather than man. Yes. And I'm telling all you homosexuals, please, before it's too late, yes. make it right with God before fire yes. and brimstone has destroyed you yes. too. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm. But how can God possibly judge this world till he gets his house straight? Now, I'm going to tell you something that the Lord told me many years ago. He said, I'm going to take three holy men of God home to be with me before I pour out my great wrath upon this earth. Uh -huh. First one he said was Rex Hombart. Second one he said was Oral Roberts. Third one he said Billy Graham. Uh -huh. Rex Hombart has died many years ago. Oral Roberts has died back a few years ago. Billy Graham is still living. Billy Graham is very old. And I said to the Lord, why? This is what he said. They've only ever known me as the good God. All their life they preached about God is good. God's a good God. The love of God. The mercy of God. The grace of God. That timing period was there. That was their calling. He said they've never known me is a judge of God. But immediately as soon as the last one is taken home, I'll begin to pour my wrath out upon this earth. We've got some hell coming down the road. For you people in all these other nations, you probably did not even hear of I just dreamed that God gave me, and we'd have to look back on our records when it was, but it was years ago. I had a dream. I don't even know what it was. It was so real that I never had anything so real. I was standing on one side of a street looking at a small country town. I remember seeing the buildings. They were white buildings, beautiful white buildings. And in the middle of this small country town was a white church. Everything was white. The sun was shining so bright. It was so bright that it almost hurt your eyes because it was so bright so clean. Little children was not playing on the sidewalk, they was actually playing out in the middle of the road that came through the town. Such tranquility, such safety, such wonderful, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. And I remember as I looked upon this thing, I began to cry like whimper, oh, oh, because I wanted to be there in such an atmosphere of this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Such beauty, such... I can still see the women. It was like back in the 50s. The, the women were wearing their little hats uh, and, and carrying along purses and so forth, going down the streets. Just so beautiful. Everything... You didn't see no nakedness or any perversion. Everything was just nice. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord said, look to the right. And look to the right. There was a small hill. Not a big mountain, but a small hill. Uh, right out from the town, but the people in the town could not see over top of this thing. And when I looked to the right, I looked on the other side and I could see a great big black ball, black and red fireball coming towards the town. It was roaring. It was engulfing itself, just 
Did you ever look in the clouds and see how clouds were rolling and just, just engulf or something? And it was just rolling towards this tire. And fear hit me because I knew there was no way that these people could escape this. And the Lord spoke to me as clear as could be. If I'm lying, may God struck me dead right here, right now. These are the words he said. My people are oblivious to what's coming. He did not say the world. He said my people. My people are oblivious to what's coming. He's showing judgment coming. He's showing judgment coming. But God's people don't have the faintest idea. You know why they don't have the faintest idea? Because they're not in the spirit of God. They're not seeking God. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sins. But we don't. Such a spirit of pride. People walked in the church, and I, I, I met so many people. Said, "I won't come back to that church because they did not recognize me when I walked in." Huh. Oh God! <laughs> Everybody should drop to their hands and holy, holy, holy. Everybody wants to come toot the horn. Do 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 do. I have arrived. Hmm. Boots hanging out, legs hanging out, hairy chest hanging out. Looking like the world. Some man called me and I pray to God you're watching tonight. You said I'm a clothesline preacher. You better believe I am, buddy. I still believe in moss appeal. I don't believe that women should dress like a whore if they call themselves a Christian. And I don't believe you men should go out here and run around naked with your little hot pants on and so forth and have gold necklaces. Come on. Come on. WWJD. Come on. Are you a holiness preacher? Yes, I'm a holiness preacher. Because God said, for without holiness, no man that's should see God. Right. That's, right. Mm -hmm. that's right. Are you a money hungry preacher? Yeah, I'm money hungry. I'm money hungry. Yeah, I believe in tithes and offerings. Will a man rob God? Can't you rob me? How do you rob me? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed for the curse because you have robbed me. This whole nation. You're going to beg for it? I ain't begging for it. You want it and you want to go to hell with it? That's up to you. I'm, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. Yeah. You sure don't look it. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Give me a tickle your little ear. <laughs> David says in the 23rd Psalm, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. How do you, how you like to have that kind of comfort? A rod takes across your head a couple times. <laughs> don't line up, break your legs so you won't lead a sheep astray. Now my staff will come to you and yank you back out of that hole. But if you do it again, I'm going to bust your leg. Uh -huh. hey. David learned. God is love. You should never fear God. He's going to go sugar daddy in heaven. Uh -huh. David said, yeah, I, I want to talk to all the people around the nations. God has dealt with me for many, many years about the prophets gathering. I'm, I'm going to do a series of teachings on the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the operation of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And some of you called and said, you cannot have a prophet's teaching. Well, Elijah had a prophet's teaching. People can go to college and teaching to learn to teach, to preach the Word of God thus and thus. But yet, when it comes to moving in the Spirit of God or as a prophet, how many of you know a lot of people need to be trained up yeah. how to move and when to move? Mm -hmm. yeah, do. Mm -hmm. I have to share it constantly with people all the time when to speak and when not to speak. Somebody say amen. amen. Some people start more trouble because they open a big mouth before yeah. they should open a big mouth. Yeah. So I'm speaking to all you people through all the nations, all the true prophets and prophetess. Not the ones loose in the gift of prophecy. Listen to me. Not the ones where God has used you in the gift of prophecy. It's for the edifying, the comfort of the church. It's good words to comfort you, to exhort you, to lift you up. 
But a prophet and prophetess is not as anything like that. They hear from God and they bring God's word and use its judgment of things to come. So all you prophets and prophets around the world, get a hold of this ministry. And God has dealt with me someplace. I don't know where. Might not even be in America. I don't know. But someplace we're going to have a gathering. It's going to be the round, prophet's round table discussion. And we're going to get together and talk the things what God is doing. Now all you other people that's not prophets or prophets, you're welcome to come that you might hear and learn and, and see and also to bring fear upon you. So we say amen. How many of you know we all are called and fit in the body as it pleased Him? Mm -hmm. My sister right back here, she is saying in, in the ministry at different times, and I heard her sing a song, I can't remember what it was years ago. Sister Karen, all of you singing. Huh? You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory, is that what it was? And she came in and started singing. And I could not believe what I was hearing. I had to open my eyes and say, my God, where's this coming? And I was looking at all the ladies when they were singing and so forth. I could still not see where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. Such anointing on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say this, not to condemn her. But how many of you know is this? If God has gave you a special gift, and you do not use that gift that God has gave you, you're robbing the people. Somebody say amen. amen. Pastor said to me the other, the other week, Brother Humphrey, you got a song for us? I said, I'd love to sing and play for you. <laughs> well, no, I said, I'd love to, but I can't. <laughs> Somebody say amen. <laughs> I wish to God I could. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I wish to God I had wavy hair, but all I've got is spikes. <laughs> But when I get to heaven, I'm going to have beautiful white long hair flipping in the breeze. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> but how many of you know, I just one of you know, all you people across the world, if God has gave you a gift, whatever the gift that might be, and that calling, that anointing, if you don't step forth, you're going to help be held in judgment. Somebody say Amen. amen. So we say glory to God, hallelujah. hallelujah.